square and it was really annoying me. Uh, welcome to my craft room. My name's Julianne Richards and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator in southern Tasmania. Get the important bits out of the way, out of the way first. Oh, oh, okay. We can tell that my volume is working, so that's good. Uh, apologies, I'm a couple of minutes late. I was having, I just had a text message from a friend to say that someone had tested positive. Um, uh, someone at work had tested what well, my old work had tested positive for um for uh, COVID and I, I was trying to work out who it was and whether I needed to be concerned but anyway all good I think we've sorted out who it was so not too bad okay so uh, as I say welcome for my Wednesday crafting uh, today we're going to be making this little gift card holder here using fundamentally the um the Scotty Christmas or Christmas Scotty punch that comes with the um, Christmas Scotty stamp set in the, uh, together in a bundle. Um, we're only going to use the punch. Um, I did actually sort of preliminarily, preliminarily, initially um, uh, design this card for a fun fold class, um, but it basically decided that I would probably um, swap it out with something else, mostly because it uses such a lot or a fair bit of this uh, checkered paper which I, I don't have a lot of and so if the class goes well I would have had to buy more which would probably be a bit of a waste to get uh, a whole pack just for that one sheet. So anyway we're going to be using the punch. We've got a couple of little Scotties on the front there uh, just to sort of uh, take in the black Scotty dog owners and the white Scotty dog owners. Apparently they come in white, somebody told me the other day. It's got a flat card base like that, but it does sort of come out with this sort of zigzag Z fold here. You've got your Scotties on the front, you've got your gift card in the centre panel, and then you've got the white uh, panel for writing your, your message on um, underneath as well. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty little fold. It's a very handy fold very very handy fold for um for gift cards and that just that little bit different um if you uh, are giving a gift card for a in this case birthday or a christmas or anything like that so um yeah so let's get the, give this one a, a bit of a go um, i'm actually going to cut all the card stock for you as we go just because it's a very simple um scoring and cutting plan so i thought i'd do it as we go um so you guys can see the the measurements as well um, if you are new to watching my channel or you haven't done so, please uh, uh, like and follow my YouTube channel. Um, I'm trying desperately to reach 5,000 subscribers just as my own, for my own purposes, just my own pride. And uh, I'd love to you to help to, to subscribe to help me get there. Uh, anyway, so and before we start crafting, I will do a little bit of self promotion. These are the three cards for my current product class. It's a texture chic product class. Um, it's a lovely pink one there with some bling. This one's an envelope card. I was going for something in a little black, black and gold and sort of sophistication, which I, I think really, really hits off quite well with a little, um, sl little um, slip in there for your personal message. That also would make a very good um, gift card holder. So that one there. And this one is a little swivel um, easel card with the pretty pinks and blues and the um, the shells there as well. And the beautiful pool party ribbon, which is really a highlight of that one. So this that's my um, product class for August. Um, if you're interested in that and you live in Australia, please pop over to my Facebook page and you can see the details for that one. But anyway, let's get crafting. Um, so I'll put my version of the little card there so I know what I'm doing. As I say, I'm going to grab my trimmer and I'm going to cut all these. Oh, forgive the bang if that hurt your ears like mine. Um, I'm going to cut these as I go, basically because I'm a little bit disorganised today, I'm trying to work out who was um, who was uh, who who had COVID. I didn't know who I was going to have to look up. Look, you know how long I'd spent with that person. Okay, so the card base, I suppose you'd call for this card, comes in the two parts. There's the flat front back piece and then there's the, the Z from the front. So the the flat card base is just a standard, I'll cut that while we go, five and a half by four and an eighth. So I'm gonna use, I'm trying to use as many scraps as I can. So I've gone through the scrap box and found all the black scraps and real red scraps that I possibly can. So this is black, obviously. So we've got um, five and a half by four and an eighth. It's basically a quarter 
of an A4 piece. So I'll pop that aside. And then the, the Z fold part, this little Z fold part here, is three inches wide and nine inches long. So three inches wide and nine inches long, and it is scored at three inches and six inches. So nothing too hard on the brain there. So scoring that, that's a nine inch piece, scoring it at three inches. No. So much for it being easy, I've muffed it up. Anyway, it's actually four and an eighth wide. Goodness me, Julianne. And it is nine long. So it is still nine long, but it's wider than three inches. It's four and an eighth wide. Okay, and then it's scored at three and six. Gosh, I was going to be so good, so clever. Anyway, so I've got a spare piece of that that I will never probably use. So, okay, nine inches long, four and an eighth inch wide, scored at three and six. So there we are. And that's where we get our little Z from. That's much better. Don't know what I was going to do with a three inch wide one. There we go. Okay, so that's our other piece. So we've got our card base back and our card base front there. So what we also will need is some real red. So we're going to layer up with real red. So for the back card base, I'm going to need, um, I'm going to make it three and seven eighths by a five and a quarter. So that makes it a quarter of an inch smaller than our card base or the back, the main one. So there, like that. I'm also going to get a piece of this lovely checkered, um, this is from the Gingham Cottage um, designer series paper. It's got a nice big check on the back and a smaller check on the front. And I'm going to need one piece of this, which is going to fit inside my red, quite hopefully quite nicely. And that's going to have to be five and a half, five and an, uh, five and an eighth. Yep, so five and an eighth, take off that bit there, by three and three quarters. There we are. So that one pops just in there. And then this one pops on there. So that's just layered up like that with a just a faint red border around the paper. Okay, so what we might do now is we'll put those together. Oh, um, yeah, we might put those together and then I'll bring them back in the trimmer when I want to cut some more pieces. Jumping around a bit. I don't know whether this will be my new way of doing videos. Maybe I will, should just create everything and show you, just show you how to put it together. But I thought I'd give it a go this way so you could see the cutting and scoring. Okay, so the red, the real red on top of the black, like so. And then, now, you can do this two ways. If you're wanting to conserve your designer series paper, you can see I've got a piece of the designer series paper on the front there. So what I've actually done is grab a stitched rectangle and I've actually cut out the centre of that designer series paper because obviously it's behind there. You're not going to see that there's a bit of a hole in the paper there. I've cut the required piece of designer series paper out of that so I can use it on the front. Because I'm not going to be using it for a class now, I'm just going to be a bit reckless and throw, um, throw caution to the wind and I'm just going to cut a whole new piece for that front panel. Just because I think I can. So there we go. So that's the back of our card, our fun fold. Okay, so for the very front of our card, We've, we've, again, we've got this is four and an eighth by three because we scored at three. So it's four and an eighth by three. So that's what we're looking to to match our cuts to. So I'll get my trimmer back. We need the real red. What's the best scrap to use? This one. Okay, so this one's going to have to be four, four and, I don't know, three and seven eighths because I'm taking it down half an inch by two and three quarters because I'm taking it down half an inch that way as well. So that's going to sit just on the front like that. 
definitely need a new trimmer trimmer blade i'll do that in a moment when we're finished and then our designer series paper is going to sit on front of that red and so it's going to have to be i'll make sure i can get the right amount so it's going to have to be two and five eighths i'll pop all these um, measurements um, onto a blog post for you if you if you would like so don't worry too much about that and that's three and three quarters so that little piece of designer series paper just fits snugly on that red and then both of them are going to sit on the front of the card base like that okay. pop that aside we'll bring in our card base and we can do that okay so last time i made this card i popped the pop the dogs on the wrong on the wrong way up so i have to make sure i put them on the right way this time they were little upside, do upside down dogs and I did it before. They didn't look very happy. <clears throat> Just a quickie card today. I'm actually off um, into the sort of local shopping area with my mum a little bit later this morning. Just to do some final or bit of shopping. and. Um, few bank related things trying to get things sorted out for her since dad passed it's all a bit um it's all a bit complicated i have to say um but anyway we'll get there i have heard of people still trying to sort this stuff up stiff out years after someone passes so i'm not really looking forward to that okay so we've got our little z piece sort of partially decorated i've popped some glue on the back and I'm just going to locate that smack bang in the middle of the card base. It's good with this with the little um, strips. You can actually line it up with the the gingham, the plaid pattern. You can line those up and get them pretty straight with your lines. So the card, there we are. It opens up like that. Okay. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. You've got one layer on the back and then you've got a simple Z fold on the front, which, uh, which is where all the action happens. Okay, so we'll keep moving on. What I'm going to do now is pop the little um, pocket there for our gift card. Again, I'm going to use the real red paper and I'll bring in my trimmer again. I'm going to cheat here and you all have to be, well, not cheat. I'm going to um, use a retired product here so you all I'm, I'm swearing you all to secrecy that uh, that you won't tell anyone that I've used a, a retired item I want just a little piece of the uh, red just to contrast the, the black that we've got so this is a real red it's just a scrap it's probably the best part of two inches high or two inches wide and I just want to bring it in to um, half an inch smaller than that little panel there which would make it three and seven eighths so a little this is going to be our little a little pocket for the gift card and here's where you have to um, all swear that you won't tell anyone that I've used a retired product I'm using my tailored tag uh, tailored tags my um, what's it called I can't remember now it was one of my favorite tags and I can't remember its name isn't that terrible tailored tags I think it's tailored tags but we've got something else called that now anyway I'm using that and I'm basically just going to use it halfway across like that just to cut out a little slip a little triangle there just to make it easier for the gift card to put you know to be brought in and out and I'm going to pop that on that top um, on that middle panel of our um, of our gift card um, while I've got my trimmer out, I'll trim the white. I'll make the white panel for the personal message at the front. Again, that's going to have to be two and three quarters high, and four, uh, three and seven eighths. So that's going to go just straight on there. Now you could layer that up on the red as well if you wanted to con continue the pattern all the way through. But I think I'll leave it big so that I can do a fair bit of right writing on there so we'll pop that one on there and then we'll put our little slip our little pocket on there
Now, I'm going to put the pocket on with double-sided tape and I've got six mil double-sided tape here, which is quite wide um, for this. Um, and you have to go as close to the edges as you possibly can to get the standard sized gift card in. So I'll get the gift card out from the first one. You can see there, if I put a gift card in in front of that or in that little pocket, the double-sided tape is going to have to go really, really close to those edges so that that card can fit in with that size. Um, an alternative and probably a good alternative is if you have three mil double-sided tape or something a bit narrower or you can cut a piece of that in half. Um, you might give yourself a little bit more wriggle room when it comes to your card. So that's what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to use my three, three mil. Get a bit of a cut down there. The end's a bit gumpy. So I'm going to use three mil. If you've got a really nice fine glue, fine pointed glue that you're comfortable won't spread too much inwards, then by all means use that. Uh, but I find the immediacy of double sided glue is good, uh, double sided tape is good for this, this purpose. So very fine line of glue or tape. And that's going to go on there. I actually made these last year, these very similar fold, using another stamp set from the Christmas collection last year. And um, I actually popped that through an embossing folder, which was really nice. But I did find that it, embossing folders tend to weaken the cardstock a wee bit. And so you need to be very careful when you're popping your gift card in. So there we are. So that's our little pocket for our gift card there. I might pop a happy birthday or something on this one actually I could use I haven't actually used the um, stamp set for this one so I might little bring one of our little Scotty dogs in and pop it on that inside there but we're going to decorate the front now which is really the the main game of this one here we are we've got the little punch so just a little pop Scotty dog I'm not going to actually stamp a study a Scotty dog and um, punch it I'm just going to use the silhouette straight from from, from the um, the punch itself Okay, so I'm going to use some scraps of black. Let's see if that's, no, that's nowhere big enough. Okay, so I want a black Scotty dog. So I'll just punch a black one, which, which obviously oh, are the ones that I'm used to seeing, but somebody did tell me that they come in white as well. And I'm going to do a little white one. Did just mention here see somebody say that they look really good punched out of the actual designer series paper and that's a wonderful idea so i haven't got a scrap big enough so maybe i'll come back to that idea thank you for that whoever that was i'll come back to that for a future video and a white scotty dog so i actually just need a little scrap i haven't got a little scrap of paper so i'll use this one and we'll grab a little white one as well so obviously when you use this you end up with some little bow ties I'm not going to use those because i'm going to cut them some red ones some real red ones so for my two little scotty dogs i need two little red bow ties i'm just going to use a strip of cardstock there so i don't waste very much i can just thread it through in line with the the bow part there we are. So I've got two little Scotty dogs and two little bows. I might pop their bows on them first. A little white guy. So I'm having them pointed that way. I did contemplate popping them on because you can flip them, pop them on sort of like kissing like that, but they, they're a, bit, a little bit long. So it might be good for a little card if they were sort of facing each other, but um, they're a bit long for the, for the card front here. So I'm going to pop them next to each other looking at looking off to the left so let's pop his little bow on tiny bit of glue just near his neck and his little bow so cute i did try and give them some eyes with 
would I try with some some bling? I tried to give them sort of like just pop them in the right spot to give them little eyes. Um, but I couldn't get the positioning right and they looked a bit possessed. Um, a bit crazy eyed, so I thought I'll take that off because nobody wants nobody wants a card with two wide eyed, you know, quite alarming looking Scotty dogs on them. So I took them off. There we go. So we've got our two little guys there. I'm going to pop the white one behind. Now I popped the white one on behind because I needed the little black guy. He sort of merges in with the paper a bit if he's a straight onto it. So that's why I thought I'll put the little white one. Seems to sort of stand out a bit better against the designer series paper. Pop him on first. And then the little guy, the little black guy can sort of, oh, don't move, Scotty Dog. The little black guy can sort of partially overlap him and he stands out a wee bit better. So I'm going to pop him on some dimensionals. Make him stand out even better, if that's a word. And I've grabbed mini dimensionals, which are my least favourite crafting supply in the whole universe. Just find that my fingers must be a bit clumsy or something. They're just a bit small. They have their purposes, of course. Especially on that, say, that tail there. I wouldn't have got a big one on there even if I'd tried. But I do fumble with them a bit. Let's pop out other little guy, sort of overlapping a bit and slightly forward. There we are. Isn't that cute? It's like a, the perfect um, gift card for a, a dog lover, especially if they've got little Scotty dogs. Are they called something different, Scotty dogs? Are they just called Scotty dogs or are they called something, you know, like German shepherds are called Alsatians or... You know, that sort of thing. Do they have like a, a breeder's name or something? If you know, let me know. Okay, so we've got our two little guys on there. I'm going to give them a sentiment, um, a sentiment, she says. The sentence trailing off to nothing. Um, I'm going to just have happy birthday. There's no happy birthday on the Christmas Scotty stamp set. Obviously, it's a Christmas stamp set, so it's got some Christmas greetings. Um, so, but I'm going to use the happy birthday out of Art Gallery, which is my go-to, seemingly my go-to when I'm wanting just a nice, plain, simple happy birthday, as you can tell, because the stamp's lost its stickiness a bit. Okay, so just in black, just keeping with the black and white, just on a scrap of white. There we are. Now I'm going to grab my, I might use this one. This is the, she says, going off camera. This is the sort of stitched banner from the Stylish Shapes dies. I might use that one for something a wee bit different. I'm just going to cut it down so I can get it through my mini cut and emboss. It would be a bit thick, a bit wide otherwise. Oh, here's my baby. Scottish Terrier. Thank you, Susan. Knew there had to be something. Some other name to them. They're very cute. And you do associate them. I don't know. I'm not a big... I've got a dog, but I'm not a big dog person. But you do associate them with Christmas to a certain degree. I think probably they've been picked up um, by advertisers over the years to advertise Christmas, various bits and bobs for Christmas. So I think that's probably why we associate them a wee bit with Christmas. They've been in chocolate ads or something about that like that during the Christmas period so I think that's probably why they they pop up unless somebody can tell me differently about that as well and somebody did say to me it didn't understand why the Scotty dog was associated with Christmas and the only thing I can think of was maybe it was 
used in um, shortbread advertising or something like that. And everyone who sort of gives shortbread to people, they have no idea what else to give to sort of thing. Known as the Aberdeen Terrier. Oh, thank you, Tonya. You are my source of, uh, my, also my source of uh, knowledge. So this little um, happy birthday on the uh, special, uh, on the stylish shapes banner. I'm going to pop that on some dimensionals as well. Might as well stick with the minis since they're here torturing me. I'm going to pop some on the back. The very end of the tag is actually going to pop its little end on that little Scotty dog so I won't go all the way to the end with the dimensionals because it's going to overlap that dog that's already on been propped up. I'm just going to pop that there. So it's going to only, only overlap him a wee bit. I've got one up. That one's too close. I'll pop that there. There we are. And I might actually, I'm going to pop another one just up under there. There we are. There we are. So that's the front and that's very crooked. I don't know how I've managed to do that. There we go. That's no better. But anyway, there is our front decorated. Um, I'm going to do some, put some bling on there. On my original, I've just used the iridescent gems and I might use those again. I know I got them out. I got them out. I did get them out. Where did I put them? Oh, there they are. These my iridescent gems, uh, iridescent jewels, I should say. As much as I love them, I can't get the name right. And I'm just going to pop three of those around. You're going to cooperate with me. Come back, you. Now, I'm being very, it's probably very silly, but I was being very careful popping a gem around the back of the dog because to me, if I popped it in the right, wrong place, it looked like he'd sort of dropped a little gem, <laughs> a little present. Um, so I'm popping it sort of down towards and away a bit. That's really weird, I know. But when I was thinking of it, I thought, no, I don't want somebody to think that that's the little dog's left us a present, so I'll pop it a bit further away than um, I normally would. Now I say it out loud, that's really weird. Anyway, all good. Okay, so there we are. So this is a nice quick one today, 28 minutes, and I did actually, I cut all those pieces as we went, so that was pretty good. So there's our little, as you can see, once you've got the... Um, once you've got the, the cutting done, it goes together really nicely for that last minute um, gift. And it sort of makes it, I like to give gift cards in something a little bit special because, it, I mean, you know, a gift card's pretty easy. You just pop into the shop and, and buy it. You don't have to think too much about the present. But um, I, I do like to, for the person to know that I've popped a little bit of thought into the actual presentation of that of that uh, gift card as well. So hopefully you like that one. Give it a bit of a go. Um, as I said, this was going to be in my next uh, fun fold class, but I've substituted it out um, for one that didn't use or that uses the same amount of designer series paper, but one that I can um, that I can more readily order um, if I get a fair few takers for the class. So here we go. Hopefully you like that one. As I say, we've just used the punch for that. Um, and if you sort of you can buy the punch separately. There's no no worries about that. If you find that you're going to to use the little um, little Scottish Scottish Terrier um, in ongoing, he's definitely a, a good punch to 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 look at getting. Um, but anyway, so thanks for joining me, to guys. I'm going to pop in, have a shower, go and pick up my mum, and um, I will see you all again at the weekend. So 